But for our example, let's say it's about halfway. This leaves the balance point of the shaft five inches in front of our 14-inch fulcrum point. And remember that any uh, additional weight on the head side of the fulcrum point will make the club pivot, as pictured here, counterclockwise, causing a higher swing weight. So looking at this, our example again on the swing weight scale, it's 39, or 39 inches long. The fulcrum point we say is always 14 inches, so that leaves our shaft approximately 5 inches from the fulcrum point. If we know that 50 gram inches is one swing weight, and we divide by 5 inches, we know that it requires 10 grams of shaft weight at this length to change the swing weight by one point. Now, if we were to look at a club longer, like a driver, then the balance point of the shaft is going to be further away to the left, um, as pictured, to the fulcrum point. And, and it would require less of a change in shaft weight to change a swing weight. But a good rule of thumb is for every 9 to 10 grams of shaft weight, it'll change the swing weight by one point. And this is the reason why normally when you go from, say, a 75-gram shaft to a 65-gram shaft, the swing weight is lighter and not heavier. I did mention that the balance point of the shaft is not always in the center of the shaft. Again, depending on the balance point, if the balance point is closer to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the head or the grip, it's going to alter the swing weight. Uh, but that change is usually pretty nominal. It takes about a quarter inch change in the balance point of the shaft to change the swing weight by a quarter point. Now, let's look at the uh, swing weight change when we factor in the grip. Now, a typical grip is 10 and a half inches long, and its balance point is slightly toward the butt cap since grips are tapered and thicker in that section. So that leaves the balance point of a grip approximately 10 inches from our fulcrum point. Unlike before, we're now changing the weight on the grip side of the fulcrum point. So if we add any weight, then the club uh, will, will pivot clockwise on our scale when you face it like uh, what's shown here, thus reducing the swing weight. And again, conversely, if we reduce the grip weight, the club's now going to pivot around the fulcrum point and increase the swing weight. We know that the 50 uh, grams, uh, gram inches is one swing weight. And if we divide by our 10 inches, then we know it requires about 5 grams of grip weight to change the swing weight by one point. We really don't need to factor in the length like we do the head or the shaft because the, the length of a grip is fairly constant. Uh, unless we're talking about grips for belly or long putters. Okay, now let's, uh, let's recap here. The swing weight is the cumulative moments of all the components, the head, shaft, and grip, around the fulcrum point. So if we know the total weight of a club, that, uh, that's just a start. In our example, let's say it's 390 grams. We also need to know the balance point of the club, which is 29 and a half inches from the end of the grip, or more importantly, 15 and a half inches from our fulcrum point. Well, if we multiply the 390 by 15.5, we get uh, 6045 gram inches, or uh, 213.23 ounce inches if we convert by dividing 28.35 um, for the grams per ounce. And if we go back to our conversion chart, uh, let's see, let's go back there real quick. It's going to show you that uh, that number, that 213, or 213.23, um, is very, very close to our D0. And that's what the swing weight scale measures.
under our next component, which is length. Let's uh, show you how the swing weight factors into that. Using our same example as before, we're just going to shorten the club by half an inch. And if we take the length off the butt end or tip end, that's only going to have a measurable effect on the flex. But for swing weight, it will reduce the swing weight by three points. Here's the reason why. As material is removed from the shaft, it will become a little bit lighter. Even if we have a heavier weight steel shaft, that's all, that half inch is only going to amount to a gram and a half. And, the, and if we have a lighter shaft, it's going to even be proportionally less. For, but remember, it takes about 9 to 10 grams of shaft weight to account for one swing weight. So our measly 1.5 grams or less is going to have little uh, to no effect on the swing weight. Now, if we're just shortening the club, then the head weight and the grip weight haven't changed. So now we don't have to factor in those uh, components either. But think about this for a second. Now the weight of the head is a half inch closer to the fulcrum point, and the balance point of the shaft is as well. The, the balance point of the complete, completed club is now roughly three-tenths of an inch closer to the fulcrum point. And if we take that amount times the uh, club's weight, that will reduce it by three swing weights. On the flip side, let's say we didn't cut as much from the butt end of the uh, shaft so the length is a half inch longer than our uh, original example. Well, I don't want to get into the extending because uh, there we we're adding additional material over and beyond that of the shaft. So let's just keep it simple. Again, that extra ha ha half inch of shaft material is um, far from the 9 grams we need to change one swing weight. Uh, plus the, the weight of the head, or the, yeah, the weight of the head and grip haven't changed. But well, once again, the head weight is moving further away from the fulcrum point. This shifts the balance point of the club and produces the extra moment around the fulcrum. This extra half inch adds the same three weight, uh, three swing weight points as when we uh, uh, shorten the club. So it really doesn't matter if it's a steel shaft or graphite, or if the club is a, a driver, a fairway, a hybrid, an iron, a wedge, or a putter, that half inch equals three swing weights in all cases. Now before we get started in the other topics on swing weighting, I want to reinforce what swing weighting really is. When someone says a club has a swing, a swing weight of D0 and another has a swing weight of D2, which is the heavier club? Well, the likely answer for most people is D2 is heavier. But in fact, it's not predicated solely on the overall weight of the club, only the relationship of the club's masses around the 14-inch fulcrum point. Looking at the slide, we're going to add 400 pounds to this golf club. We're going to add 280 pounds to the grip end, which is the shorter beam length. Remember, our fulcrum point on the uh, grip side is, is a fixed 14 inches. On the head side of the fulcrum point, um, we're going to add 120 pounds, just far enough away that the club, again, will balance out at the D0 mark. The higher swing weight simply means that we have a higher percentage of weight positioned further toward the head end of the golf club. We actually fit for overall weight, primarily the shaft, since there's a greater range than 